So I get this text, and all the text says is dinner, tomorrow, 7.30, and pick me up. I couldn't believe it. It was shawty. The last time I saw her was in college, and she was looking absolutely gorgeous in a cherry red sundress. The entire campus prayed that summer would never end. <laughs> so I did what she said. I showed up to her house to pick her up. I opened the door, and there she is, 5'5 five five with brown eyes, wearing a snakeskin halter top and gauchos. I couldn't believe it. She was gorgeous er. She invites me in, we embrace, and it felt just like sunshine. She said, Reggie, come on in and make yourself comfortable. And that's just what I did. I took off my shoes and had a seat on the couch. She said she would only need a few more minutes to get ready. No problem. They gave my time for my imagination to run away. I started to imagine, what would it be like if she was my woman? What would it be like if I was her man? What would it be like if she was the one? I, then, all of a sudden, I heard a knock at the door. Bop, bop, bop. It's not my house. I don't answer it. <laughs> so I look to the left, and who do I see? I see Shorty. Shorty looks through the peephole. Shorty looks back at me. I look at Shorty. She looks back through the peephole. She says, it's my ex. I know I had to play it cool and a little tough. So on my best hood voice, I said, well, which one is it? <laughs> she said, it's Tori. I said, Tori? Six, five, three, fifty, Tori? You see, I knew Tori back in college. To impress the ladies, he would open up canned goods with his teeth. <laughs> he was absolutely crazy. And I didn't want any parts of that. So I was scared. Yes, scared. That's like two levels above scared. <laughs> Educational moment. So I walk up to her and I pull her close and I put my hand on her heart and I look her in the eye and I say, as the woman of the house, how do you plan on protecting me? <laughs> she says, Reggie, I never let him hurt you, baby. And that gave me comfort. She said, just wait back in the room for a few minutes and she would get rid of him. I believed her. So I get back in the room and anxiousness and anxiety and just frustration started to overwhelm me. So I started to pace around the room. And after my third lap around the room, I looked up and I saw a vision board. And this vision board had three things. Number one, buy a house. That's cool, I can support that. I can still see us making a happy home. Number two, make babies with Tori. Make babies with Tori? I'm Reggie. I didn't like that. Number three, watch Reggie and Tori fight for my love. Fight for your love? I don't think so. So at this point, I'm really frustrated. I'm sweating hard, the anxiety is going like crazy, sweat's coming down from my head, my head's super shiny. So I said, look, I need to calm down. So you know, I sat down on her bed, or what was supposed to be our bed, and uh, I could feel the pettiness start to flare up in me. Sometimes I'm a little petty. I said, you know what? I should cut her duvet up into itty bitty little pieces. But I guess I was so overwhelmed and emotionally drained, I fell asleep. That is until I was rudely awakened by some adult noises. I guess the prophecy of the vision board came true. Her and Tori were making babies. So at this point, I knew I had to get out of there. I had to come up with something, right? So I'm like, all right. Option one, I could walk down the hall like a big dog and bust Tori in the head but we already know that's not me. So I'm like, all right, option two, there's a window. I'm on the second story. I could jump out the window, get in my truck, and ride away in the sunset with my life. I'm like, okay, I gotta get out of here. 
I'm supposed to be Reggie Reg, smart and cool. I can't even tell anybody about this. If I call them, they're just gonna laugh at me, like y'all. So I'm like, all right. I walk up to the window, I'm still in my socks. I'm walking around the room, I'm like, okay, still, why is Tori here? Why is Tori here? I still haven't figured this out. So I'm like, all right, I get up to the window and I look out. I said, all right, all I have to do is jump out of this second story window into my socks, onto the awning, from the awning to the flower bed, from the flower bed, get in my truck, and I'll be good. As soon as I hesitated, I heard my favorite song from Seal. Fly like an ego. And that's just what I did. I jumped out the window. And when I jumped, I said, shorty. Yeah, I called for her. She didn't show up. So then I land safely, thankfully, and now I'm walking to my truck in my socks, get in my truck and I throw it in reverse. I look at myself in the rearview mirror. And I say, Reggie, you gotta fight for what you love. You gotta fight for what you love. And that's when I made a decision to get out of my truck. I marched myself up to the front door of my socks. I got up to the door, pop, pop, pop. Tori answers, and with a look of confusion in his eye, he said, Reggie? Reggie from college? I said, what's up, my Eskimo brother? <laughs> he turned around to look for Shorty, and that's when I took an opportunity to take back everything that I loved, my shoes. Thank you, thank you. So I got my shoes, and at that point, I never really trusted women, women the same. It's always been a little difficult, but you know, I'm growing. And at that point, I decided three things. One, never to date a woman from college. <laughs> never date a woman from college, I need to tell myself that again. Old habits. <laughs> Number two, never be a pawn in the game of love. And number three, stay away from windows. Thank you.